You might remember the paper 2D beat-em-up I've been working on in Unreal Engine 4. Well, today's the day I'm finally gonna upgrade the project to Unreal Engine 5 and the new version of Paper ZD. Upgrading the project to Unreal Engine 5 was actually pretty simple. I first had to make sure that I installed the new version of Paper ZD, which this project depends upon. After that, I just had to locate the project on my hard drive and right-click the new project file. Then select Switch Unreal Engine version and pick Unreal Engine 5. When trying to play an editor though, there were a couple of different issues. With the new version of Paper ZD, there is no output of character on the event on init node. Instead, we now need to use get owning actor. After doing this for both of my characters, I could play an editor. However, it would only play the idle animation. I checked the animation trees to see if there are any issues, but Paper ZD actually did a great job at automatically converting everything to the new way animation blueprints work. There were also no issues with the animation source file and everything was being displayed properly here. In the blueprint I then noticed that for some reason the anim instance class was set to none, which probably happened by upgrading the project. I then just had to select my paper Z the animation blueprint and the animation started playing again. I then went into the project settings to enable Lumen, which is the new global animation system in Unreal Engine 5. After that I restarted the project and checked if Lumen was actually active by moving the street lamp close to a wall. This lamp only has an emissive material and no lights attached, but through Lumen it can still illuminate things around it. When I played an editor again, for some reason the animation stopped playing. When opening the blueprint I was then unable to see or edit the details of the animation component. I am pretty sure this is a bug. I then just copied the animation component and set my values there. This will lead to issues you will see later in this video. Then it was time to finally get rid of my strange socket based system for triggering hitboxes and use the animation notifies that come with Paper ZD. If you followed this channel for a while, you might know that I don't trust animation notifies after going down a rabbit hole. The anim notifies on animation montages for skeletal mesh animations are actually not guaranteed to trigger or can be delayed. So I stopped using them for gameplay critical things and have been looking for alternatives ever since. But I talked to the developer of Paper ZD and he said in this case anim notifies actually aren't put in a queue, but are guaranteed to be played right away. I also had to change a few things in my blueprint to switch the hitboxes on and off and then apply damage on begin overlap instead of always having the hitboxes active and just curing them at certain points in time. But this led me down another rabbit hole. All of a sudden my hitspark effect would spawn in a different position from the one I set in the sockets. It seems that it would always use the socket from the frame before the current one. Even cheeky tricks such as using a delay of 0.0 seconds to try to play the hitspark on the next frame didn't work out. I then went into another project to try to get to the bottom of this. I simply attached a sprite of a hamburger to the samurai and attached it to a socket to see if it will properly update the position on the correct frame of the animation. And when going frame by frame I was able to see that it did indeed update the position on the correct frame without a delay. So I was very confused as to why this wouldn't work in my other project. But after setting a few breakpoints and print strings I found out that it seems like the logic of applying the damage actually runs before the new animation frame is even shown. This means that if I set the animation notify to play on frame 4, but use a node to get the current playback time in frames, it would print out 3. This would lead to me also getting the socket location of frame 3 instead of frame 4. Since I plan on making a full on paper ZD tutorial in the near future, I had to know what was causing this and who better to ask than the guy who actually wrote the plugin. Heavy Bullets has always been super helpful and would gladly answer all of my questions. Turns out that yes, the anim notify does actually get processed before the flipbook shows the next animation image, but still on the same frame. Therefore nodes such as get current playback time and frames and get socket location are outdated. That's not a bug or anything, but simply how the engine works. He suggested adding variables to the anim notify and drawing debug boxes in the editor for these kinds of things, which worked out just fine. I'll go into more detail about this in the actual tutorial. Weirdly enough, another method that worked out was attaching a particle effect to the socket from the blueprint and just activating it on the attack frame instead of spawning a new particle effect. Since my hitbox system changed, I also needed to update the way multi-hitting moves work. To allow multiple hits for something like an uppercut, I needed to reset the hit enemies during the animation. But with the new system, I also needed to toggle the hitbox on and off. But it seemed like all of a sudden my anim notifies would fire off twice in a row, which would lead the uppercut to it way too many times. After a long time of looking for the reason, I finally found that it was caused by me having two animation components on the character like I pointed out before. So I basically just remade my character again and the bug was gone. 
Now everything was working fine and the uppercut would hit multiple times. There is one last thing I've been meaning to try out for a long time and that is adding edge lighting to the characters. Seeing how awesome the lighting was in Streets of Rage 4 was actually one of the reasons I even started this project. There is a Lua script for A-Sprite by Securus that allows us to easily create edge normals. I then had to import the normal texture into Unreal Engine and mess around with a bunch of settings to get it to work. I won't go into too much detail in this video but I plan on making a full tutorial about how to set up edge normals for edge lighting in Unreal Engine 5. If you enjoyed this devlog you might also like this video about how I made a simple fighting game within a week.